Hi, this is Peter Godin, it's your ambassador from KABY TV with another segment of Good Morning Oxnard. And occasionally we have a lot of diversity in our, our programming and once in a great while we get a chance to meet somebody who writes a book, a very interesting book. And in this occasion I've had a chance to greet and meet and interview Gail Weaver who is involved very much in the Oxnard High School District with with the ROP, is that the name of it? Air Force Junior ROTC program. Oh, I couldn't say it. that was way too long. <laughs> but I did not realize it to my great surprise and I actually looked over a book and he calls it Weaver Resilient Life. And uh, I'm not a speed reader, but it was so fascinating. I actually took a lot of things out of it and uh, connected a lot of areas. And I just want you to kind of give us a little, just a bit of overview of okay. why did you write it? I mean, what the book's about and maybe what you want to tell our millions okay. of viewers today. All right, thank you for having me. I, I wrote this book because I wanted to tell my life story. I had a lot of things happen to me as a youngster, growing up, and my family, and I've always felt uh, I could do better. I could always make a comeback. I could always bounce back if something bad happened to me. So I start out by talking about my grandfather escaping from the Russian soldiers who were attacking the Jews in the Ukraine and my grandfather made it to New York and raised a family, uh, met my, uh, that was my mom's father, met my uh, grandmother in New York, then my parents uh, grew up, my parents went to Syracuse, and uh, my father was a track star. So my parents had a, a rocky upbringing to begin with, especially my grandparents on my mother's side. Um, when we got to um, New York, uh, it was a struggle. Um, my mother and father divorced, and my mom moved to California to get away from my father. My father was a F-86 pilot in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Alaska when my father was an alert pilot flying F-86s. But my father was very abusive and controlling, so my mom, my brother and I, one morning, we ran away and we moved to California to get away from that. And so my mom was a single parent, raised my brother and I, got remarried, uh, then my mom got lung cancer, and my mom passed away later. Uh, she was only in her mid-50s when she passed away. Mm -hmm. It was really hard on the family. Um, we managed to get by somehow. My brother eventually got into drugs, which um, it scared me. I was worried about him. And I just decided that no matter how many bad things were going to happen to me, I was always going to make a comeback. I was going to be resilient. So this book really is about resilience. When, when bad things happen to you, you have a choice. You can either feel sorry for yourself and, and let it get to you and it can make, a, make your life turn for the worse, or you can turn it around and you can uh, try harder and you can do better. So I tried to learn from the mistakes that my father made and that my brother made and I met a beautiful woman uh, when I was living in Guam from the island of Palau. We've raised three beautiful children. Um, I went 20 years Air Force as an officer, had a full career, then I went into teaching, became a counselor, got my PhD, um, then I came up to Oxnard and I've been five years in the uh, Air Force Junior RTC program. So I feel like my life is, a, is sort of redemption. It's a matter of overcoming the struggles that you face on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, I had some personal struggles. I, had, uh, I was diagnosed with cancer. It was only skin cancer, but I was told I had cancer. Mm -hmm. Then I had a problem with my hips. Uh, I ended up having one of my hips replaced in 2005. Then I had my second hip replaced in 2011. So at one point, I had the doctor tell me I had cancer. Then they told me I had glaucoma, I was going blind. Then I couldn't walk. I thought, great, I can't walk, I can't see, and I'm, you know, I have cancer, so I was a triple whammy, so I was very frightened. Then I went and got another diagnosis, the doctor said, no, you don't have um, glaucoma, you just, your pressure in your optic nerve is a, on the, with the fluid is a little bit high. Interesting. Thank God. So then I got my hip replaced, and I could walk again. Then I had the cancer that was on my ear uh, fixed, it was removed. So I felt like I, like I was redeemed, a giant weight was lifted off my shoulders. And at that point, there were many things that I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, ride my bike across the United States, which I did. I wanted to get a PhD, 
which I did. I wanted to go and see the animals in Africa. I wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. which I did. So what I realized is that the time that you're most down in your life, that's the time to make a comeback. That's the time to come back stronger. You can't give up. You got to. You got to keep coming up with a new idea. You got to. You got to refresh yourself. You gotta, that's a good way to put it. Well, you know, when I look at the book, you do such a great job of talking about individuals in yes. your life, your dad, your mom, your brother. Yes. And uh, I just see how the viewers would be interested in that. In our culture, yes. we want to be seen as the Joneses or whatever name it is, that we have no issues. Right. And I think it took a lot of courage to yes. put this on. Yes. And you know, when you read it, you realize we're all normal, uh, dysfunctional, if I can say yes. it, is the normal yes. portion of it. But yes. there's something you can do about it. Yes. And so as I glanced at the book, how you just talk about the personalities, the challenges. And yes. you know, one of my favorite things, lots of good pictures, and, a, and again, yes. all respect, your mom was absolutely gorgeous. Thank she could have, been a, a, could have been a, a movie star, and Thank I mean that. Much. If you don't believe me, take a look at the book. Thank you very much, yeah. But you know, it's like, uh, what, what these kind of books is, okay, it is what it was, but what was the solution that you're trying to present to this audience who, who are watching this? What, what I'm trying to show them is that, and I've even done this in my classes in the high school, I said, how many of you have had hard times? How many of you had a parents that got divorced? How many of you had had physical problems or health problems? Almost every student would raise their hand. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach them to be resilient, to bounce back when they have bad things happen to them, to not give up. There's a, there's a lot of challenges in the world today. There's a lot of tests the kids have to take. Many of them are trying to get into college or trying to find a job and a career. And a lot of them have a lot of doubts and they doubt themselves and they're scared. And so I feel like it's almost like since I'm a survivor and I have done well and made good decisions, I'm trying to pass that on to the next generation of kids. So, you know, each chapter, I wrote 11 chapters. My first one you, you came to word with the word dysfunction. My family, I felt, was dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And I believe many families are. Mm -hmm. If not all. <laughs> so it's not unusual to have a, a, somebody with an alcohol problem or a divorce or somebody gets a, uh, put in, incarcerated in jail or something. So you have to learn to deal with those things. It's part of normal day-to-day -day living. Right. People get sick, people die of cancer or die in car accidents. You have to learn to bounce back from that. So number one, my, my lesson is, um, there's nothing more important than family. They're still your family. You still love them, even though they, they're bad things that happen. Yes. Then I talk a little bit about running. We were talking in there about running and Steve Prefontaine and I ran for mm -hmm. Moraway High School. Well, the lesson on that chapter is that hard work always pays off. Because mm -hmm. what I found out is that if I trained harder than everybody else and I was a little short, skinny guy, that I could beat everybody else. And once I realized that, I applied that to everything else in my life. Then I went into my classes and I said, you know what? If I study harder than everyone else, I'm gonna get straight A's. And I did, mm. I got straight A's. So then I, later I moved up to Oregon and I love the mountains and I wanna go hiking and so on. So the lesson in that chapter is to follow your heart. So this is a lesson I try to teach kids. They come up and ask me, Major Weaver, what, what, what should I do? I don't, I'm undecided. I said. I can't tell you what to do. You have to follow your heart. Mm -hmm. You're the one that you're the only one that's going to be able to make that decision. Um, then I moved out to the Pacific Islands because it was something I always wanted to do, and I met this beautiful island woman. If I had not gone out there, I wouldn't have had my whole life would have been different. So all the, all through my life, the decisions I made were based on the experiences I had, and I tried to build on the positive experiences that I was having. Then I join the Air Force. And that turned out to be probably the best decision of my life because it helped me get a career. It allowed me to travel. My wife and I, we ended up having three children. And um, we lived in Europe, we lived in Germany, we lived in Hawaii, Guam. I traveled all over the Pacific, all over Asia. Um, had a lot of fantastic experiences. Then we decided to come back to Virginia and we spent 10 years there so our children could go through high school and college and so on. So. Getting, and, and then I went back and got my PhD at William & Mary. So that was a very, very difficult thing for me to do. It took four years, a lot of politics involved, but I never quit. I never gave up. And so now I have a, a PhD. But 
all through the, all those experiences, I still felt like my true calling is the students, mm -hmm. is to give back to the kids. How can I um, take what I've learned and boil it down into some simple life lessons that I could then translate and I could help the students on a day-to-day -day basis. So this book, We Have a Resilient Life, it, it talks about 11 life lessons that, that I've learned through my almost 60 years of life. This, is my, this month's my birthday, so I'll be turning 60. Don't happy birthday. Don't happy tell birthday. anybody how old I am though, okay? Let's have a vote and see who can guess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and my, my final couple chapters I talk about, um, I call it my slow, steady decline. Okay, I talked to you a little bit about my health issues. But, uh, you know, you start getting hard of hearing and you start forgetting where, you walk in the room, you forgot what you're going in there for, that kind of thing. And so, where did I put my car keys, that kind of thing. But, um, so I think you have to have a little bit of a sense of humor about that. You have to still keep your fitness level up. But the, the end, my last le lesson of life is you have to live, love, and laugh. You gotta enjoy every minute. You're kind of a good cup of coffee in the morning, being with friends and you know loved ones, going out and enjoying the beach. We live in a beautiful city, Oxnard. Mm -hmm. We're by the beach, beautiful community, a lot of hardworking, a lot of great people. Just enjoying the moment. Enjoy the moment. And, and by so, the way, I heard, heard my car keys. So. Oh, good. You know where you are. And you're not as old as I am. Well, I let's not talk about that. Huh. But you know, I want to let you know, I, I looked at this book and glanced at it and I, I want, I hope I can get a buy a copy from you because yes. I was mesmerized just in three minutes I took it. And uh, I hope you'll get a chance to, uh, to read it. And where's it going to be available right you now? You can get it on Amazon. The best place to get it, if you go to my website, which is, it's, it's very easy to remember, www.weavearesilientlife.com. And if you go to that website, there's a place that says buy now right under the book. There's a black and white copy for $15.99. There's also, you can buy a full color copy, the photos are in color. And that's a little bit more expensive because of the cost of, of printing. So if you go to the website, that's the best way to buy it. No, and, and you know what, special bonus, you get a chance to see what he looked like when he was first born. <laughs> the beautiful lady he married. Um, like me, I'm a half breed. So uh, you have beautiful children. Thanks. So, so with that, I hope we'll get a chance to read the, the Weave a Resilient Life by Dale Weaver. And uh, unfortunately, we have to unwrap it up, which is okay. always my Thank you very much. part Thank of the you. show. But this is Peter Godinus with KNY TV with our background music going. Until next time.